Okay, so without using a calculator, can you figure this math problem out? And the problem is 4 to the 3 halves power is equal to what number? Now, this is not a difficult problem, but of course, a lot of you are not going to know what to do. Well, don't panic. I'm going to fully explain this in just one second. But uh, for those of you who are like, oh, I totally understand this, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here in just one second. And then I'm going to uh, fully go through the solution and teach you some very, very critical things about powers, okay? This is stuff that you absolutely need to know. And a lot of you may not know this, but don't worry. This is not complex stuff. It's stuff that you can understand. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so 4 to the 3 halves power, what is the answer? Let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. Here it is. It is 8. Okay, so again, hopefully you did not use a calculator. And if you got the right answer, you're like, yes, I did this correct. Well, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that you are an expert in rational exponents and radicals and square roots, et cetera, et cetera. Now, your family probably really won't care, but they will tell you, oh, that's so awesome. Keep up the great math work. But nevertheless, we should celebrate your success in this area. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So here is the problem, right? So we have 4 to the 3 halves power. What is this equal to? Now, if we wanted to use our calculator, of course we don't, but uh, if you want to do this, just to kind of say, well, let me uh, make sure that this guy did this problem right. I want to double check this guy. So what we would do is take four, and you would hit one of these buttons on your calculator. So uh, this upside down V, that's called a caret. Or there's another button like this, Y to the X. This is basically taking powers. And then you have to put parentheses and put three uh, divided by two, just like that, and hit enter, and you'll get the right answer. And that is eight. Don't forget to use parentheses, but you should practice using your calculator, taking powers, because uh, that is very important. But uh, this right here is not that difficult if you understand this property of square roots and radicals. Now, I'll explain this here in a second, but in mathematics, this symbol here, most of you might say, oh, that's a square root symbol, and more or less you would be correct. But you really want to start referring to this as a radical as well. So when you study, for example, let's say in algebra, uh, you know, uh, more details about this symbol, you'll be studying radical expressions, radical equations, et cetera, right? It's typically not going to be referred to as uh, square roots, but that's kind of what it is. But let's go ahead and start making some uh, connections here between the radical symbols and what we call rational exponents, all right? So rational exponents here, another fancy word in math, rational. So when you hear rational, uh, effectively think fraction, okay? So fractional exponents. So with a power, like two to the third power, this three is the exponent and this two is the base, okay? So we're talking about, again, rational exponents or exponents that are fractions, okay? All right, this is really important stuff and not that difficult. I think sometimes the terminology is more complex than the actual kind of principles. But let's go ahead and make some connections here. So the square root of 4, you can write this, the square root of 4, as 4 to the 1 half power. Okay. Now, with the square root symbol here, there's technically a little 2 here right there. We won't write that, but you just kind of need to know that in the square roots there is a little 2 right here and of course when you study rational or so uh, radical uh, um, expressions and equations you'll learn more about this but effectively what you need to know right now is that the square root of four we can write as four to the one half power so if you take anything to the one half power like 100 to the one half power what you're doing is taking the square root of 100 okay all right so let's go ahead and take a look at another example of how this works so if i have the cube root of eight 
Now, this is not the square root. Okay, remember the square root has a little two. If I take the cube root of eight, this is equal to the eight to the one third, right? And the cube root is what? It's what number times itself three times gets us back to eight. Well, two times two times two gets us back to eight. So that's the cube root. And that's, um, you know, different obviously than the square root. All right, so hopefully you understand that whatever this number is right here, we can just write a fraction where one is the numerator and this number here is the denominator, okay? So uh, the cube root of eight is equal to eight to the one third and the square root of four is equal to four to the one half. So this is important uh, that you understand this, but this is not the full story. This is only uh, partially um, uh, what we need to understand in order to do this problem. But hopefully you find this pretty easy and let's go ahead and take a look at the next part of uh, uh, what we need to know to solve this problem, which is not that difficult. Just like subscribing to my channel is not that difficult. So if you're getting any kind of value out of this content, hit that subscribe button and that notification button. You have no idea of the positive impact this has on my YouTube channel. So thank you very much and back to the problem. Okay, so the first thing we needed to know is that we could write a square root, like the square root of four as four to the one half. Okay. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about is this. Now, of course, I have what we need to do right here. Let me go ahead and just table this for a second and show you what's going on by this simpler problem right here. Okay, I'll get back to this in just one second. So two cubed squared, I can write as this way, okay, two to the sixth power. So what happens is when you have a uh, exponent and an outside exponent, you simply just multiply the outside exponent to the inside exponent. So two cubed squared is the same thing as two to the six or uh, two times three, okay? And you can see this if we just kind of think about this, right? Let me go and erase this right here. And that's what's cool about a lot of these rules of math that we really think about it, they're not that difficult. So two cubed is what? Well, that's two times two times two. And if we square anything, we're taking this thing and multiplying it by itself, right? So we're gonna take two cubed and multiply it by itself. That's what it means to square, right? So two cubed times itself is two cubed squared. So two cubed times two cubed is what? Well, how many twos do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, or two to the six. So this is just kind of a simple example to see that this property uh, works. Now, again, when you are you know studying courses like algebra, this is gonna all be um, you know, taught to you in more uh, kind of formal way, but we're just kind of going through this particular problem here. All right, so now let's get back to our problem. So four to the three halves, we're trying to figure this out. Well, if we can kind of use this property here, okay, we can kind of rearrange this such that we have four to the one half, and we'll put this three on the outside. Okay, so we're getting kind of uh, creative here. Uh, because we know what four to the one half is. This is the square root of four, but four to the one half to the third power is the same thing as three to the one half, right? So four to the one half to the third power is the same thing again as four to the one half times three and one half times three or three over one is in fact three halves, okay? So this problem here, we're just splitting it up in this way. Okay, now why would we do that? Well, because we can easily figure out what the square root of four is, and four to the one half is uh, the square root of four. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and uh, see this all in action right now. All right, so four to the three halves is the same thing as four to the one half to the third power. And now we know that four to the one half is the same thing as uh, the square root of four. The square root of four is two. Two to the third power is two times two times two which is eight. Okay, so hopefully you're like, wow, this was like easy and I should have figured this out in the first place. Well, listen, math is not, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I was almost gonna say math is not difficult. Math is difficult when you don't learn it in the correct way, okay? Now, how do you learn math in the correct way? Well, the first thing you need to do is get clear and understandable comprehensive math instruction, okay? Don't start doing problems if you really don't know what you're doing because you're just gonna get frustrated. So, you know, get some great instruction. That's what I'm passionate about is try to teach this stuff, you know, break it down 
in its simplest terms. So get good, uh, great instruction, and then you need to practice. Okay, and when you start practicing, you want to practice with basic, easy problems and work your way up and get to those more challenging problems. But if you only, you know, do basic problems, you're not going to really develop, you know, your skills. It's very much like resistance training or weight training, right? Once you learn how to work out, and if you only lift, a, uh, you know, a little bit of weight, well, you're not going to get as strong as you possibly can. No different with mathematics. So it's one thing to watch me do a math problem, but if you truly want to get better at math, you have to practice. Okay, so if you want to practice more of this stuff and learn more about powers and rational exponents, check out like my Algebra 1 course or maybe like my Algebra 2 course. But uh, you'll see links to my most popular courses uh, in the description below. But I also have a lot of uh, videos on my YouTube channel that cover this stuff and much, much more. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.